this is your prof next door, Sir Joseph. I hope this video finds you all too well and you're all in good health. So, for this video, we will be talking about one of the highlights of Jose P. Laurel's career in the government service. So, we'll be talking about his time in the Supreme Court. So, now the question is, ano nga bang ginawa ni JPL sa Supreme Court? So, uh, after the Commonwealth government was established, si Jose P. Laurel was assigned as a associate justice for the Supreme Court in 1936. So, under his court, mayroon siya mga hinawakan ng mga uh, sasabi natin na controversial cases and then mayroon din siya mga hinawakan ng mga sasabi rin natin na uh, became the basis for many decisions in uh, later court decisions na naganap after his time. So, kung titignan natin, the time of JPL became uh, one of the most important time sa judiciary branch ng ating government. So now, let us talk about the two important cases by which became uh, very controversial and uh, Jose P. Laurel made a very important decision that made an impact not only in the jurisprudence of our government but, not, but of course in the future of our country itself. So now let us first talk about the uh, Angara versus Electoral Commission. So what is it all about? Si Jose Angara nanalo siya sa 1935 elections as an assemblyman for the province of Tayabas. He won over a certain Pedro Insua. So Ngayon, ano yung nangyari? Uh, the, in December 1935, after uh, Jose Angara won his post and was uh, was already uh, taken his post as an assemblyman, si Pedro Ensua, uh, uh, ang National Assembly, I mean, the National Assembly declared that uh, they should file the last day of electoral protest. But then, on December 8, 1935, Pedro Insua filed a motion or an electoral protest against Jose Angara and he wanted him to be removed from his position and be replaced by Pedro Insua himself. So now, on December 9, 1935, the Electoral Commission proclaimed that they will set the last day of the election uh, protest on December 9. So ngayon, nagkaroon ng problema. Because of course, according to Jose Angara, it should be the National Assembly uh, yung magde-decide for the last day of the elect filing of electoral protest, not the Electoral Commission. So ngayon, anong naging issue rito? Of course, nagkaroon ng banggaan ang dalawang uh, institutions ng ating government, yung National Assembly and of course, yung Electoral Commission. And isa pa sa mga naging uh, usapin dito, sino nga ba ang dapat uh, manguna sa pag-resolve ng conflict dito? So of course, nagkaroon ng question, kaya ba lang Supreme Court or dapat ba ang Supreme Court? So ngayon, uh, Jose Angara is also questioning kung nasa jurisdiction ba ng Supreme Court ang pagde-decide doon sa naging conflict between the National Assembly and the Electoral Commission kung sino ba ang dapat masunod doon sa pag-set ng date for the electoral protest. So, of course, after the trial, ang naging decision ng Korte Suprema is this. According to the decision made by Jose P. Laurel, he states that, uh, he, states the he stated the following. So, that in cases of conflict between the several departments and among the agencies thereof, the judiciary with the Supreme Court as the final arbiter is the only constitutional mechanism device finally to resolve the conflict and allocate constitutional boundaries. So, ano ba sabihin? Ang ating judicial branch, particularly the Supreme Court, is the final arbiter sa mga hindi na pagkakasunduan or na, hindi mapagka, na pinagtatalunan ng mga usapin sa iba't ibang branches of the government. It only shows na ang um, ating judicial branch is as powerful as the different branches of our government. Pangalawa, 
judicial supremacy is but the power of judicial review in actual and appropriate cases and controversies. And it's the power and duty to see that no one branch or agency of the government transcends the Constitution, which is the source of all authority. So sinasabi rito ng uh, naging decision ni Jose P. Laurel na ang ating Supreme Court or the, the judicial branch kasama siya sa pagkakaroon ng check and balances. So pag sinabi natin check and balances, it ensures that the powers of the government are within the bounds of our constitution. So, anong naging resulta nito? Sinasabi dito ni Jose Laurel sa naging decision ng Supreme Court that the Supreme Court has jurisdiction over doon sa conflict between the National Assembly and the Electoral Commission. So ngayon, anong nangyari dito sa kasunod? Ayan. The Electoral Commission is the sole judge of all contests relating to the election returns and qualifications of members of National Assembly. So, ibig sabihin, according sa naging decision ng Korte, ang mas dapat na nagde-decide for the filing of electoral protest is the Electoral Commission. So, ngayon, ano nangyari? The court sided with the uh, uh, with with uh, Pedro Insua and the Electoral Commission because of course according to the Supreme Court the Electoral Commission is using its function within the legitimate uh, boundaries of its power so ibig sabihin sumusunod pa rin sila sa constitution so ano nangyari nabaliwala yung petition ni Jose Angara na pigilan yung Electoral Commission and of course yung Supreme Court dun sa or they decide sa magiging future ng electoral protest niya. So ngayon, uh, pinakita dito na yung ating branches of the government is indeed subjected to check and balances. And of course, pinapakita lang din dito na yung ating Corte Suprema ay may function as a branch of the government na tignan kung nasusunod ba ng iba't ibang government branches and institutions yung kanilang functions. Kaya ngayon, ano yung pwede natin makita dito? Ano yung pwede natin na uh, i-relate dito sa Excel ko yan? Of course, nakita natin yung anti-terror law. So, yung anti-terror law ngayon uh, sa kasaysayan ng ating bansa, ito yung may pinakamaraming uh, protest na uh, na-file after it became a law by which the Supreme Court has to investigate and of course, later on magkakaroon ng trial kung uh, within the bounds of our constitution ang anti-terror law. So, makikita natin yung naging uh, court decision ni Jose Laurel dito sa Angara versus the Electoral Commission became an integral part of the jurisprudence ng ating bansa dahil uh, kung makikita natin pinakita ng Supreme Court na sila ang final arbiter sa mga hindi magpagkasunduan sa batas sa but ibang functions ng ating government. So, makikita natin, very important ang role ng Supreme Court ng ating judiciary branch sa ating bansa. So, I hope you are still uh, able to follow. Moving on, let us now talk about the second case na gusto kong i-share sa inyo, which is about the uh, assassination or murder case of uh, Julio Nalundasan. So, dito, naging controversial because it involves the family of the Marcoses. So, Mariano Marcos, Pio Marcos, and then a young Ferdinand Marcos. And of course, uh, it also includes Quirino Lizardo. So, ngayon ano nangyari dito? The 1935 elections, uh, Julio Nalundasan was able to win, second win niya, against kay Mariano Marcos. And to add salt to the wound, the supporters of Julio Nalundasan paraded around the property of Mariano Marcos. So ngayon, that infuriated the Marcos family because of course, syempre, talo ka sa eleksyon, masama loob mo, tapos ayan, pinamuka pa lalo sa'yo na ulats ka dun sa election. So now, on September 20, Julio Nalundasan was assassinated by a gunman. So binaril si Julio Nalundasan habang siya ay nakatalikod sa kanilang property. So ngayon, anong nangyari dito? 
Ang unang napagbintangan at ang unang hinaharap sa korte noon ay isang uh, taong nagngangalan na Nicasio Layawin. But later on, he was acquitted. So, noong 1938, December 7, 1938, dito pa lang sinampahan ng kaso ng murder si Mariano Marcos, si Pio Marcos, si Ferdinand Marcos, and si Crino Isaldo. So, ngayon, ito, naging controversial because of course, uh, political rivals, families, mga ganyan. So, ngayon ito, habang nagaganap yung trial kay Crino Lizardo, nagsampa ng mga iba't ibang cases of false testimony yung tatlong Marcos against a certain Calixto Aguinaldo na nagsasabi na siya yung primary witness dun sa kaso against the Marcoses. So, ngayon ang nangyari. Ang issue rito, the Marcoses filed uh, false testimony case against Calixto Aguinaldo kahit hindi pa tumatakbo yung kaso laban sa kanila habang wala pang hearing. At ang hearing pala na nagaganap ay yung kay Quirino Lizardo pa lang. So ngayon, ang ginawa ng korte ng Ilocos Norte, they filed a contempt uh, of court case against the Marcoses. So, habang tumatakbo yung trial ng murder case, meron din silang kaso ng contempt of court. So ngayon, ano nangyari dito? Ang resulta ng trial, the Marcoses were, uh, of course, they were guilty dun sa kaso ng murder, particularly si Ferdinand saka si uh, Crino. Si Mariano saka si Pio Marcos, um, they were acquitted. Ang problema, ang penalty for murder at that time is of course kamatayan, death penalty. So, nakulong si Ferdinand Marcos at si Quirino Lizardo and they are also waiting dun sa punishment ng death penalty. Ngayon, ano naman yung nangyari sa kaso ng contempt na sinampa sa kanila? They were also guilty for the uh, contempt of court na sinampa sa kanilang kaso. So, um, the Marcos has appealed dun sa uh, korte, sa judiciary branch, hanggang umabot sa Korte Suprema. So, yun na nga, nagkaroon ng trial sa Supreme Court at ano yung naging takbo o na ano yung naging uh, inilalaban ng mga Marcos dito sa Korte Suprema. Sinasabi nila that uh, they are challenging the credibility of Calixto Aguinaldo as the primary witness for the murder case. And ito, sinasabi rin ng mga Marcos, bakit nakalaya yung dalawa, si Pio, saka si Mariano, habang si Ferdinand and si Quirino Lizardo were uh, found guilty for the same evidence. So, ngayon, yun yung mga naging i-issues dun sa korte. And of course, uh, sinasabi rin nila na yung local court ng Ilocos Norte are denying the Marcoses of the reopening ng, or magkaroon ng bagong trial for that uh, certain case. So ngayon, after the uh, trial sa Supreme Court, anong naging decision ng uh, Supreme Court? So ito, sa naging decision na sinulat ni Jose Laurel, sinabi niya rito na si Calixto Aguinaldo, the primary witness for uh, the murder case of um, Ferdinand Marco or of, of Julio Nalundasan cannot be trusted as the star witness. Bakit? Maraming inconsistencies na sinabi si Calixto Aguinaldo in contrast dun sa details or dun sa merits or evidences na prinesenta ng prosecution. So ano-ano yun? Unang-una, sinasabi ni Calixto Aguinaldo na si Ferdinand Marcos daw ang napili na babarel or magiging gunman kasi at that time Marcos is only a minor under 18 years old but the problem is at that time Marcos is already above 18 years old so he's already liable sa kaso sa korte ang sinasabi nila dadalhin lang sa uh, boys town or um, mas, mas, mas mababa yung parusa na makukuha ni Ferdinand kung siya yung babarel kay Julio Nalundasan So ngayon, pinakita dito ng, ni Ferdinand Marcos na 
gumaganap yung kaso na yan, hindi na siya minor. So, pangalawa naman, sinasabi rito na uh, si Felix Aguinaldo, hindi maganda yung relationship niya with Quirino Lizardo. Kasi sinasabi ni Felix Aguinaldo na uh, he worked as a, parang some sort of a bodyguard for uh, Quirino Lizardo. But the truth is, nagkaroon pala ng conflict yung dalawa with a certain uh, administrative investigation na ginawa ng government agency na kung saan nagtatrabaho si Calixto Aguinaldo. And doon sa ginawang investigation, Quirino Lizardo testified against Calixto Aguinaldo. So ano nangyari dito? Calixto Aguinaldo lost his job because of Quirino Lizardo. So, lumalabas, it could be some sort of vendetta or parang uh, gustong gumante nitong si Calix Aguinaldo against uh, Quirino Lizardo for uh, losing his job. So, pangatlo, sinasabi rito na at that time na nagpaplano yung mga Marcos ng pagpatay kay Julio na Lasan, si Ferdinand Marcos galing siya ng Manila. Dumating siya sa Ilocos Norte September 15 ng gabi, 8.30. But according to the testimony of Calixto Aguinaldo, September 15, pananghalian, noon time, nandun na kagad si Ferdinand Marcos. Which is at that time, very impossible. So kaya na-travel from Manila, nag-aaral siya sa UP at that time, and then mapupunta siya bigla sa Ilocos Norte ng tanghali. Okay? So, isa yun sa mga naging uh, uh, naging sinasabi na inconsistency sa naging statement ni Calixto Aguinaldo. So titignan natin dito kasi sa korte, very important ang consistency ng mga statements na binibigay ng mga witnesses and of course dun sa evidence. Kaya naging ending nito sa sinulat na decision ni Jose Laurel, Calixto Aguinaldo is an unrea uh, is a witness na hindi credible, unreliable siya. So, uh, ang ending, the murder case against Ferdinand Marcos and Crino Lizardo was dismissed. Acquitted silang dalawa. Nakalaya silang dalawa. So, kung titignan natin, sa timeline nung naging buhay ni Ferdinand Marcos, ito yung time na uh, sinasabi ng mga supporters niya na uh, he was able to defend himself as a lawyer. Ito na yung time na si Ferdinand Marcos yung tumayong abogado para sa sarili niya. Ito na yung nag-aral siya ng pagka-abogado habang nakakulong siya. At, uh, isa sa mga naging bar top notchers at that time. And uh, yun yung isa sa mga uh, amazing na kwento dun sa buhay ni Ferdinand Marcos at that time. Pero ngayon kung titignan natin, Uh, ano nangyari dun sa pangalawang kaso ng contempt of court against kay, sa mga Marcos sa kay Lizardo? Ang nangyari dito, Jose Laurel uh, maintained the decision of the local trial court to find uh, the Marcos as guilty dun sa contempt of court. So tatanda natin, they were both acquitted for the case of, uh, uh, for the murder case, but the decision to uh, make them guilty of contempt of court is withstanding. Nandun pa rin. So ngayon, ano nangyari? Nakalaya si na Marcos dahil ang naging uh, parusa lang dun sa contempt of court is magbabayad lang ng danos. So from 200 pesos na penalty ni Ferdinand Marcos sa kani uh, Quirino Lizardo dun sa contempt of court case nila, bumaba yun pinagbayad na lang sila ng 50 pesos. Of course, syempre, malaki pa rin at that time. So, ngayon, uh, kung titignan natin, bakit nasabi natin kanina na very impactful ito sa future ng ating bansa? Because, try to imagine, if Jose Laurel decided to, or the Supreme Court, as a, as a body, decided to maintain the decision of the uh, Ilocos Norte Trial Court na guilty si Ferdinand Marcos at si Quirino Lizardo sa murder ni Julio Nalundasan. Of course, ang daming mirad of possibilities na mag-open doon. Nakapatawa ng parusang kamatayan si Marcos at si Lizardo. Anong pwede mangyari in the future? 
Kung sakali nyo na nangyari, or maybe in an alternate universe, pwedeng hindi naging presidente si Ferdinand Marcos. Pwedeng hindi siya naging uh, dictator, di ba? Or pwede nating masabi na baka ibang itsuro ng Pilipinas or iba ang kalagayan ng ating bansa could be for the better, could be for the worse. Hindi natin masasabi. If Ferdinand Marcos uh, remain guilty dun sa crime of murder kay Julio Nalindasan. So we never know kung ano talagang pwede mangyari dun sa ano yan. And of course, syempre hindi rin naman siguro alam ni Jose Laurel na magiging presidente si Marcos, magiging uh, dictator, magdideklaro ng mga kasaloan, gun violence, yung mga ganyan-ganyan. Diba? But nevertheless, kung makikita natin dito sa naging decision ni Jose Laurel, it opened or a It, it led to the future of the Philippines. Kaya nasabi ko na very impactful yung naging time ni Jose Laurel doon sa uh, Supreme Court as a uh, Jose Justice. So, makikita nyo napaka-importante nung role ng Jose Justice sa Supreme Court yung pagiging uh, very diligent sa pagbabasa ng merits ng kaso, sa pagbabasa ng ebidensya. And kung makikita nyo, uh, they were able to see na inconsistent yung naging statement ni uh, Calisto Aguinaldo. So, nakalaya sila Marcos. So, makikita ninyo, very important yung naging trabaho ni Jose Laurel sa Supreme Court and it became very uh, impactful, hindi lang dun sa uh, pagpapatakbo ng ating government but of course, sa magiging future ng ating government, sa magiging future ng ating bansa. Kaya isa yan sa mga kaangahanga ng mga stories na gusto kong i-share sa inyo with regards to uh, the life of Seti Laurel. So with that, I hope you have learned something. I hope you have learned a lot dun sa ating naging discussion dito. So if you have any questions or if you have uh, any comments, please you may write your comments dun sa, you may post your comments sa uh, comment box natin. I will try to answer them if you have questions. So, yan lang. Maraming maraming salamat. I hope you have enjoyed listening. Thank you very much. This is once again your prof next door, Sir Joseph. Stay safe, take care of yourselves, and take care of each other. Have a good day.